everyone and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm talking about my first time ever getting a chemical peel what my experience was like for the whole week my skin was peeling and i also went ahead and talked about my experience getting disport for the first time in my forehead region this video ended up being a little bit long because i wanted to be sure to document the entire process for anyone who was interested so i promise i kept in all the important pieces but if you do want to skip around i have all the timestamps down below in the description so feel free to go to the parts that you are most interested in to give you guys an idea of the exact chemical peel i got it was called the vi peel precision plus and i had that done at crawford cosmetics who did my lips before so i am super comfortable with her you guys are probably familiar with her she's been on my channel before and i've talked about my experience getting lip filler i'll have that video linked as well if you guys are interested so i know this video is already way 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 long so let's go ahead and jump into it the morning before my appointment with Crawford Cosmetics. It's currently about 8.30 on February 10th. I'm just going ahead and getting a little bit ready before my appointment. I just went ahead and did my skincare, so my skin is looking glowy. But I also wanted to give you guys a look at what my skin looks like before everything, before the Botox, before the peel. All this is just how it's looking. So I wanna go ahead and give you guys some close-ups. Also, excuse the fact I'm missing some nails here. I'm gonna glue them on before I go, but yeah, we're, we're struggling this morning. <laughs> Here you can see kind of a look at my forehead area. At first glance, it doesn't look that terrible, but I do have like a really intense line here in the center. Whenever I put on foundation or makeup of any sort, it always sinks into that line and it's super frustrating. So one of the main reasons I really want to get Botox done is to get rid of that line and to make it so it doesn't get any worse. This is before any Botox at all. I've never had anything done to my forehead. There's a lot of movement here, the frown face surprised face <laughs> trying to show you guys how much movement I have here. I have a pretty expressive forehead and an expressive face when I talk, so I think that's what has caused this line here to become so intense. So I'm hoping to just stop that in its tracks. I also have some crow's feet here that have started whenever I smile. You can see them, which is not something I really love. Yeah, that's about it. I have, you know, like everyone else, everyone's face has some expression lines and that's okay, but being someone who's constantly on camera, taking photos and stuff, it's something I overly notice about myself and if I can fix it, kind of make it a little bit less noticeable, it's something I want to do. Also, let's go ahead and take a look at the skin. So this is how my skin is looking. I've been struggling a lot with mask knee just because of the pandemic, it's been horrible but my chin area has always been a big area of issue for me and on the sides of my cheeks I do have some redness and discoloration I just recently noticed um, that I'm super sensitive to the fragrant dryer sheets that I put when I wash my clothes, when I wash my pillows, when I wash my little reusable makeup pad things to take off my makeup. It's something I just realized at the age of almost 25 years old. So that's probably something that's been causing a lot of irritation in my skin. This is actually a good skin day for me. I usually have breakouts. I usually have a lot more redness than this. So this is considered good for me. But I'm hoping that with the peel that it'll lighten up some of these marks some of the redness and overall just make the appearance of the skin look a lot better so yeah that's kind of what we're working with i'm going ahead and kind of getting ready for my appointment i'm not putting on any face makeup i just went ahead and did my skincare for the morning i might put a tiny bit of concealer under the eyes and do my brows and that's probably it because i'm just gonna have to wipe it off anyway when i get there because we are doing the peel so i'm gonna go ahead and take you guys along with me to my appointment to show you guys everything and then we will begin the documentation of the healing process of the peel and the whole kick-in process of the Botox. All right, guys, so I just made it to my appointment here at Crawford Cosmetics. I'm about to go in and get the peel done in the Botox. So I'll try to talk to you guys a little bit when I'm in there. Maybe ask her a few questions about the peel and Botox so you guys have a little bit of input on it. And yeah. 
guys, so I'm here with Shady and today we're going to be discussing what we're doing today treatment wise. So we talked about doing some Botox and a peel as well. So what would you say, what kind of person should get a peel? So chemical peels I think are good for everyone. Um, some peels are better for certain types of skin tones. Some peels are not appropriate for the darker skin tones, right? So I do carry the VI peel and the VI peel precision, purify precision plus. <laughs> The name is long, but <laughs> the VI Peel Purify Precision Plus is what we're going to be doing on you. Now that's an awesome peel. It is good on all skin types, but it's specifically formulated for active acne and acne scarring. Okay. It's going to help yeah. fine lines, wrinkles as well. Okay. So the VI Peel has a bunch of them, um, and depending on your skin's need, whether it's acne scarring, active acne, fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, it's going to treat all of those. Okay. And also we're going to be doing, is it both types? Dyspore. 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 Yeah. Okay. So what's the difference is yeah. it the same type of thing I get asked that all okay. the time yeah. so Botox and Dysport are both neuromodulators so they use this um, ingredient called botulin toxin type A um, they have different carrier proteins now that carrier protein just delivers the botulin toxin to the muscle and then it falls off okay. so essentially they're both the same active product mm -hmm. um, Botox uses a man-made human protein Dysport uses a cow's milk protein so okay. you know if you didn't want cow's milk in your body or you're allergic so the cow's milk protein, you would oh, want to, okay. you know, use the dis, uh, the Botox. Okay. Now, Dysport has more of the active product. Okay. So a couple differences because it has more active product, it's gonna last you longer. Okay. Because it uses a smaller protein, it kicks in quicker. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's a little bit um, cheaper. So I like that product better just because you know, quick kicks in quicker, lasts longer, it's cheaper. Um, it also does cover more area. So because okay. of smaller protein, you get more coverage. Okay. Um, so those are the reasons I prefer. I do carry both though. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, you Did you stop using your um, too much active products? Uh, when did you yeah. last year? Yeah, okay. no, I, I've just been like moisturizing. Cool. So you can use like someone like you who does a little have more like acne prone, you can use it like up to 48 hours before. Okay. Um, if you're more oily or acne prone up to 48 hours. So like your retinols, any, um, hydroquinones, uh, salicylic BHAs, anything like that, you can continue to use them. Okay. Um, if you really want to peel pretty darn deep, I, I'll even have you like um, keep using it until the night before. Okay. However, for most people, I think it's safe to say, you know, um, 48 hours. If you're very sensitive, mm -hmm. you'll want to stop it, you know, up to a week before okay. uh, avoiding all those products. Okay. And you're not going to use any active ingredients after this okay. for a week um, or oh, really okay. until your skin is kind of back to normal. So if you are still very dry after, you may want to hold off on that. But no, okay. no retinols, no AHAs, BHAs, no um, hydroquinones, um, and the salicylic acid, like nothing okay. that's going to be active. So right? just like stick to like a gentle yes. cleanser, like moisturize, yep. sunscreen. So the great thing with the VI peel is it comes with an aftercare kit. Okay. The aftercare cool. kit comes with cleanser for you. It's a gentle cleanser to use for a week, and that for a week okay. it comes with um, this product called repair cream okay. and that is your moisturizer it has anti-itch ingredients oh, in it great. it's okay. really good for you okay. it's going to kind of keep your skin uh calm yeah. um and it's also going to help you from getting any kind of inflammatory response because that's okay. like a risk with, with chemical peels right yeah. and that's going to come with sunscreen sunscreen you yeah. have to wear sunscreen after yeah. you had a chemical peel your skin is like baby brand new it's going to okay. burn super easy okay um and one of the biggest things we want to avoid is post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation if you um get too much heat on your face. So no hot steamy showers, no hot tubs, no saunas. Okay. Um, those are all things that can kind of cause you to have pigment pop out. And we want to get rid of the pigment. Yeah. So yeah. that is like worst case scenario. Okay, so just like baby the skin. Yes, yeah. so okay. you have this whole aftercare kit. It's going to come with these little towelettes that you're going to do. Everything is spelled out perfectly for you in a little, um, and I'll show it to you, but like a little pamphlet. Or there's an app. The app makes it super easy, keeps okay. you on uh, track of exactly what you need to do. But um, this whole formula, this whole system is kind of created to keep you on track, give you the best results. Okay. So it makes it super cool. user friendly. Yeah, I was so worried about like what products yeah. I could do, so that just no. makes it so much you easier. You can add additional like um, moisturizer. So I'm okay with added moisturizer, but that's the only okay, additional else, product. Just stick to the kit. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of your aftercare and your before care. It's not a whole lot. Yeah. I'll to do about yeah. it. For okay. the Dysport, most important thing is do not rub or touch the area. I'm going to be very. Um, specific about what muscles I am injecting this neurotoxin in. Obviously, bruising can happen. Um, there's a small risk of allergic reaction. There's yeah. extremely rare infection. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna do your peel, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do the injections on top of the peel. Um, so your skin's gonna be very sterile. Okay. But if you rub 
the area or lay down, go and lay down in this first four hours, anything like that, you can push it out of the muscle eye inject it and into one that like controls your eyebrow, your yeah. eyelid, and that's how you're gonna get a ptosis. So yeah. you really wanna avoid touching the area at least till, you know, I say it's four hours at the minimum, but really till the next day. No heavy exercise, no extreme heat as well. Again, those can all make it like move and we want it to stay in the muscle yeah. that we put it in. Yeah, for sure. You can do some contracting, squeezing, raising up, squeezing, raising up, doing things like that to get it to activate quicker. Okay. Um, so it kicks in, but Dysport does kick in in about three to five days. You'll be seeing something happening. Okay. Um, takes up to two weeks to fully kick in. Okay. So I always say, don't call me until it's been yeah. two weeks, yeah. you know, because it can <laughs> literally on like, on 14 day, you're like, okay, it kicks in, it works. You yeah. feel weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's like something's happening. I yeah. don't know what's happening. <laughs> it is, most of my clients, first time getting it up here, they just say it's a weird sensation. I'm paralyzing muscles, so you won't be able to make those expressions. Some say it's like a heaviness. Some say it just, it just feels odd. Yeah. It's an odd sensation. Like, I'm like trying to move right now. Not a whole lot is happening, yeah. right? So, okay. um, you know, that's kind of the thing to, to expect. So we are now out of my appointment. As you can see, it looks kind of like a bad spray tan, um, but not too bad. It stung like the tiniest bit. That worst part was probably the acetone that she puts on first to like clean your skin before doing the peel. The actual peel itself was not bad at all. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see what the peeling process is like. We also did the little spots of Dysport and she did a little bit of a lip flip for me as well. So as I said, I'm gonna take you guys through the whole process of the peeling and everything. So I don't imagine we're gonna see much today, but um, I will definitely keep you guys updated if I notice anything. Um, probably this evening, I'll go ahead and check in with you guys. So let's go ahead and drive home and continue on with the day. Alrighty, so I've been home for a little while now, just getting some work done around the house. It's about to hit that four hour mark where I'm about to get into my VI peel cleansing steps. So I have actually been wearing the peel for about four hours now. When you get the peel done, it all isn't all done and set in stone in office. It's a process. You have to wear it for four hours and then you wash it off to get the full effect in your skin. So I'll go ahead and show you a close up of how it looks as it sits on my skin. So hopefully turning down the lights can give you guys a look. You can kind of see that there's just kind of like a band of like orange, like how Shady described it as like a bad um, spray tan. Um, you can kind of just see the perimeter of the peel on my face. We did all the way up under my eyes, around the nose and down my neck a little bit as well. So we hit all the areas. I figure if I'm gonna do it, might as well just do it everywhere. So what's nice about this peel is that there's a whole app that you can use for your aftercare. I was really excited to hear about this. Anything that has an app, I'm downloading it. It's just so much easier for me to keep track of if I can have it on my phone. So it has you make a little profile. I'm on day one. And when you go to your directions, it tells you for day one what you need to do for the day. Also, like we talked about, I had my disport done around the forehead area and a little bit in still make faces, so that hasn't fully kicked in, but she did say that making those faces <laughs> helps to helps to activate the product. So here I am working really hard to activate it. Like I said, I don't think we're gonna see much today. I think in the couple, like two, three days to come, we'll probably see more of the actual peeling process. Talk really quickly while it's fresh in my head. The process of getting the peel didn't hurt at all. She uses the little towelettes that have the peeling solution on it and rubs them really hard, not hard, but like with a tough pressure on your face to really just rub it into your skin and get really deep in the layers of your skin. It didn't hurt. Um, I think it was a little uncomfortable in some areas. It kind of just felt like an exfoliation, a physical exfoliation, you know, when you exfoliate your skin with like a scrub or something like that. It wasn't bad, and the little fan she gave me to blow cold air on my face really helped through that. Um, I could tell when the fan wasn't blowing on super strong, it burned the tiniest bit, but not bad at all. The Dysport, um, it hurt in some areas, like some areas are more sensitive than others. Obviously, you're getting a needle put into your face, so it's not going to feel good. So honestly, like a two out of ten. It wasn't bad at all. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the first step of cleansing for the peel following the directions that Shady gave me. We have step one, which is the VI Derm Gentle Cleanser. Gently cleanse your skin. Avoid hot water. Gently pat skin dry. This is in step two. This is the VI Peel Purify Towelette. Apply first purify towelette to all the areas where the peel was applied. Use gentle pressure and do not wash off. So we leave it on and then discard the towelette, wash your hands, wait 10 minutes with that towelette solution on the face, and apply a thin layer of VI Derm post-treatment repair cream. You may apply makeup as normal. I'm not gonna be applying makeup 
up today so we'll just go ahead and apply the repair cream all right so here is how the skin is looking after the aftercare steps for the, after the four hours of wearing the peel on the skin my skin doesn't feel super irritated it feels a little tight in some areas but this repair cream feels super nourishing so hopefully that'll give my skin enough moisture that it needs jd said that i could also use a secondary moisturizer if i need to but i'm just gonna try and get by with the vi derm one so i'll check in with you guys before bed when we do the one hour before bed cleanse <laughs> All right guys, it's the end of the night on day one. I'm gonna go ahead and do my um, nightly skincare routine with all of the VI Peel products I got with my peel today. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through what products we're using. So step one, we're gonna go ahead and go in with the VI Derm Gentle Cleanser. Step two, we're gonna use the Precision Plus Towelette. Step three, we're gonna discard the towelette and wash our hands, then wait 30 minutes. And then the second VI Peel Towelette we're gonna use on our skin wash our hands after and after 10 minutes of that we're gonna put on the treatment repair cream a little bit of a longer routine before bed so like i said earlier the skin feels a little bit itchy in some areas but otherwise it feels okay i mean i didn't expect to see much tonight but hopefully tomorrow we will see a little bit of progress maybe some peeling will start so of course i will keep you guys updated on what's to come but here's how the skin is looking on the end of day one of the peel. So this morning I did intend to film my skincare process for the morning after the peel, uh, but apparently my camera wasn't on so it didn't end up recording, but all I did was cleanse, use the post-treatment repair balm and sunscreen, and I didn't notice anything, any big changes in my skin. It was just still tight feeling and itchy in some areas. All right, hey guys. So it has been a little over 24 hours since I've had the peel done. And you guys, we finally have some peeling happening here on the chin region. I felt like it was dry earlier during the day, but I didn't pay attention to it. I just had my head down working, and now I came to check at the end of the night, and there is definitely some peel going on. I did come in here during the day to reapply some of the post-treatment repair cream, just because my skin was feeling kind of tight and dry. I didn't notice it then, so it must have just started happening, so I'm so excited the peel is finally beginning. Skin overall, again, is feeling tight tighter than it did yesterday so i'll go ahead and take the glasses off you guys can kind of see a better look and at the end of course i'll kind of show you guys the whole every day how my skin was looking but my skin is definitely feeling tight especially in the forehead region probably has to do with the disc port obviously still movement but i feel like it's getting less maybe i'm crazy i think it was three to five days before it starts really kicking in and then two weeks to fully kick in we're not going to see full results in this vlog since i'm only doing a week's worth of documentation but the peel will definitely be a week's worth of documenting so i am so excited tonight we are going to be doing our skincare steps for bedtime step one vi derma gentle cleanser step two vi peel precision plus towelette Step three, discard the towelette and wash hands. Step four, wait 30 minutes for your next step. Step five, third VI Peel Purified Towelette. And I believe these are the last of the towelettes. I only have two left, so I guess we're using the final ones tonight and then throughout the rest of the healing process, it will just be cleanser and moisturizing for the skin. To reuse that towelette, we're gonna wash our hands and discard the towelette. That's it, that's it for the day. All right, so that is the end of the treatment for day two. Again, it didn't say to use any of the post-treatment uh, balm for moisturizing. So I think I'm gonna leave that out. See you guys in the morning for our our day three treatment instructions and to show you guys what my skin's looking like if we have any more peeling so fingers crossed all right guys it is now friday day three of the peel i just woke up and i'm noticing a little bit more obvious peeling around the nose region and especially in the chin area. Skin still feels pretty tight, especially in the forehead area, around the perimeter of the face, so I'm anticipating more peeling by the end of the night. I'll definitely keep you guys updated, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my skincare for the day. So today is day three. Sorry if you can hear my cat. 
he won't stop he wants his um, breakfast so i'm gonna feed him right after i do this but today on day three it says peeling usually begins today typically around the nose and mouth area which i'm definitely having around the chin and the nose so we're right on schedule step two avoid exfoliating rubbing pulling picking or peeling the skin this can cause irritation scarring and pigmentation this is something shady talked to me about as well don't touch it just kind of let it fall off on its own or you can trim it with a little pair of baby scissors if it gets really long and in the way so today we are using using our gentle cleanser repair cream and sunscreen so a very quick routine today just focusing on the cleansing and moisturizing the skin also in regards to dysport i haven't talked about it yet today but i feel like it's getting a lot harder for me to move these muscles i have any forehead lines when i make the surprise face and there's not much wrinkling going on when i try to make the frown face i mean it's still moving it's getting harder and harder to make my crazy faces Alrighty, guys so it is now the end of the night and as you can see we have had a good amount of peeling today it's really been focused in this area a lot around my nose my mouth area obviously and it's even started i hope that the lighting will show around my eyes as well like on my eyelids i tried to document throughout the day when i was noticing more and more peeling there were definitely some points in the day where i took my baby scissors and trimmed some areas because just having a piece of skin hanging off is kind of a weird feeling so i went through and trimmed some of them with some baby scissors tried really hard not to itch today obviously no tugging at it no peeling it itself just kind of let the skin peel off as it will so tonight we're going to go ahead and do our nighttime routine bedtime steps start with the vi derm gentle cleanser vi derm post treatment repair cream in step two and step three come back in the morning for the morning steps i'll show you a quick look at my skin afterwards and in the morning we will come and do the morning routine okay are you guys ready for this oh my gosh literally today i just woke up yes it is day four i swear without this app i would literally forget what day it even is but um yeah pretty much my whole face is peeling today it's starting to go up towards the forehead area my eyelids just everywhere now it seems between days three and five we're probably gonna see the most peeling and then maybe by day six the skin will start to calm down a little bit and a little itchy in some areas on the face but otherwise i'm feeling okay i've just been having like you know when you're just like sitting on the couch watching tv just like a flake of skin fall so that's a little gross but you know it comes with the process so i am gonna go ahead and do today's skincare step one good morning today is likely your first of two heaviest peeling days keep your skin away from heat and steam during peeling days avoid exfoliating rubbing pulling or peeling the skin so today we're just gonna cleanse repair cream and sunscreen so i feel like for the rest of the peel it's just gonna be those three steps and i will be back to show you guys if anything changes and then for the days following the skincare routine for the morning became just cleansing moisturizer and sunscreen and nighttime was just cleanser and moisturizer so to keep things from getting repetitive i cut those parts out but that's what i'm doing behind the scenes and i will just continue with the daily updates of what the skin is looking like Alrighty, guys so it is now the night of day four basically the peeling is just everywhere it's really started to creep up to my forehead area now it's a decent amount along my jawline and cheek region definitely started around the mouth and just has now spread everywhere Got some on my eyelids still. It's just, we're in full peeling effect. And I'll check in with you guys again in the morning for day five. So this is how the skin is looking this morning. There's a lot of peeling along the jawline, up on the forehead. Pretty much just everywhere we are peeling like crazy. Definitely getting more towards the outer perimeter. So hopefully that means we're getting towards the end of the peeling. So it is the night of day five. I just went ahead and did my skincare steps. So this is how the skin is looking. A lot of peeling in the forehead region, cheeks, and perimeter of the face still. So I'll be back in the morning to check in with you guys and show you how my skin is looking. All right, guys, it is the next day. As you guys can see, majority of the peeling today is on my forehead region and the neck area. So 
seems like it started towards the middle of the face and is branching outwards now so hopefully we're getting towards the end here and we will be done with peeling within the next day or so so i'm gonna go ahead and do my skincare and i'll check back in with you guys later all right guys so it is now the final day day seven peeling has pretty much subsided there's just a little bit around the perimeter of my face and on my neck still but my actual face area is pretty much done the skin does feel super smooth yeah i'm feeling pretty good i'm gonna go ahead and do my morning skincare of the sunscreen moisturizer and cleanser and i will check in with you guys a little later so it is the night of day seven which means it's the final night of my vi peel experience today i actually put on a face of makeup i had a milk event today trying out their new it's like a tinted sunscreen moisturizer type thing so it actually wore really well on the skin the only places i'm really peeling still is a little bit on the neck and the perimeter of the forehead but I had no issues with makeup application today. You definitely see there being an issue on the big peel days. You'd really want to just stick to like a moisturizer and stay away from makeup if you can. But today it actually wore really well. So I think I'm okay to start getting back into makeup. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this with a double cleanse to be sure that my skin is super clean. And I will talk to you guys now about my final thoughts. I just want to say a huge thank you if you stuck around to the end. You are a real one. I appreciate you. I know this was a super long video, but I just wanted to give you guys all the deets. So I hope that you found this helpful in any way. Alrighty, so you guys have made it to the end of the video. Let's get into the before and afters. So here we are looking at the before and after of the skin. In the after, all I'm wearing is some concealer under the brows and eyes. And of course, I have my brows on. But as you can see, the skin overall just looks a bit calmer. I want to show you guys a look at my skin before the peel. This is five days before after skincare, so my skin's a little wet. And four days before my skin is dry. So consider that while we're looking at the pictures, the lighting and stuff may make things look a little bit differently. But I tried to document as well as I could the stages of peeling. By day three was the probably the most intense. The morning didn't look like it, but by the end of the night, my skin, it was a little bit scary. By day five, the peel was reaching the perimeter of my face, and I was really starting to see how my skin was looking. It seemed a lot less red. The overall size of the acne spots seemed to really shrink down and dissipate, and overall my skin was just looking a lot calmer. By day seven, I was super impressed. There was just kind of a little bit of peeling on my neck, but that was it. So I want to show you guys the before and after. This is a few days before the peel, and after the peel so overall my skin just looks a lot calmer the acne spots have been diminished and i'm just really happy with how my skin is looking so i didn't spend too much time talking about price in this video since not everyone will have access to the vi peel type of peels i don't know what every aesthetic place offers but for the peel i had it ranges from 80 to 200 dollars depending on the type of peel that you get so whichever place you're planning on getting your peel i highly recommend checking out their website and social medias to get a feel for pricing you can always call and ask with any aesthetic treatment that you're getting done i highly recommend just doing your own research because there's a lot of factors that go into it again just want to reiterate this video is not sponsored i just wanted to share as much information as i can with you guys if there is anyone out there that is interested i just really wanted to put everything I could into this video. So Shady had mentioned that some people may need more than one treatment, I being one of them. She said I may need more towards three or four treatments to fully remove all redness, acne spots, and areas that I just really want to fix within my skin, but I'm pretty happy with the results I've had so far with just one VI Peel Precision Plus treatment. I really like that this peel came with an aftercare kit. It made my whole experience so much easier and I didn't have to worry about putting products on my skin that would irritate them. It reminded me throughout the day to do my morning and night routine. Honestly, it just kept me really organized and I'm a big fan of it. Definitely recommend if you're getting a VI peel done, download the app, it's worth it. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after of the Dysport. So Dysport usually takes about two weeks to kick in, but this is how mine is looking after one week. Overall, there is a lot less movement in my face, virtually none at all. All I can really do is lift my eyebrows, but there are no lines when I lift or make a frown face, which I love. There was a tiny little bruise left in the center on my forehead, but it was barely noticeable and super easy to cover with makeup. You can choose to still have a little bit of movement in your face if that's what you prefer. I chose to just fully get rid of the lines, but you can adjust it to your preference of what you're looking for. But yeah, no crow's feet and no forehead lines. The Dysport didn't really start kicking in until day four or five. It was like, I didn't notice it. And then the one day I really noticed it and I was like, damn, I have literally no movement in my face. It was like a crazy experience. Right now today, I'm showing you are only a week out, but it can take up to the two weeks to see the full results. So 
I don't know how much more my face can be frozen, but I am loving the fact that my foundation isn't sinking into this annoying line in my forehead anymore. Nothing is sinking into my crow's feet. I can smile without having them. I just feel a lot more confident in my skin and overall, I'm just so happy with my results with both the peel and the disport. They are definitely something I would do again. I'm definitely gonna keep up with the peel and I'm definitely gonna keep up with the disport as well. I love the effect it gave me in my forehead region and my crow's feet, so definitely gonna stick to that. Also, as you guys saw before in my lip filler blog, I did get a lip flip, so I didn't really wanna focus on that too much in the video, but as always, I am so impressed with it. If you're someone who's not comfortable getting filler in your lips, highly, highly recommend a lip flip. It only lasts three months or so, and it gives you the illusion of your lip being just a little bit more pouty, so kind of like it in some lip filler without the filler part. So if you are in the Metro Detroit, Michigan area, I will have all of Crawford Cosmetics information linked down below in the description, so definitely go and check her out. Check out her website and her Instagram. Her work is absolutely incredible. I cannot recommend her enough. I trust Shady so much with my face. Like, she knows what she's doing. She knows where she's placing things, and she knows what's going to look best for you, so I cannot recommend her enough if you are in the area. She has quite a few locations, so check out the website website to see which one is best for you. And you can also use my name Drew as your referral code when you are booking online or just mention it when you're in person and you may get a discount on the treatment that you are getting for the day. So save yourself some money. Also, I have promo code as well. Shady and I decided that for new clients, you can use code Drew25 to save $25. So when you book online, be sure to add that in to get yourself some extra savings. I just wanted to throw that in there if you're down for some treatment and want to save some money as well. I got you. Just use my name as a referral. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you like videos like this, if you want to see more documentation type of videos, definitely let me know down in the comments below. You can also let me know you liked it by, of course, liking the video and hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload. All my social medias will be linked down in the description below so I can chat with you guys when I'm not here uploading. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.